Hello everybody, my name is Richard Lally and I'm a research scientist with Altec. And today, in my home, we're going to conduct a little experiment to help us understand more about cellular respiration. But first of all, what is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is a process that our cells go through in order to produce energy. And energy is important for a lot of different metabolic functions in our bodies, but it's also very important for activities like walking or running. So when we eat food, we digest the carbohydrates in that food and break it down into simple molecules such as glucose. Glucose enters the cells, it reacts then with oxygen to produce ATP. And ATP is this very important energy structure that we use for all of those energetic activities. We also produce CO2 in this reaction, and this CO2 is, is given off as a gas. And today in our experiment, we're gonna to attempt to capture that gas and see uh, if we can um, try and visualize it in a, in a very helpful way. So today, to try, and, uh, to try and achieve this, we're gonna use a special kind of organism called yeast. And yeast is very interesting because it's a eukaryotic cell and it's a, it's a single cell organism and it can process carbohydrates in a very similar way to uh, human cells, uh, particularly in the presence of oxygen. So for our experiment today, what we are going to need is the following. Each bottle we're going to put a different quantity of sugar into. So I've labelled each of my bottles here. Zero teaspoons of sugar. One teaspoon of sugar. Two teaspoons of sugar. And three teaspoons of sugar. So we can go ahead now and we can add the sugar to each of the bottles. We can use our funnel to help us with this. So the first bottle, we're gonna have no sugar. In the second bottle, we're gonna add one teaspoon. Now we need to get our measuring jug and we need to put the equivalent amount of water into each of the bottles, including the bottle with no sugar. Now, what we have to do is we now need to add a sachet of yeast to each of the bottles. So this can help us understand um, what's going on in the experiment if we keep all of the other parameters the same and only change one of them. So again, we are only changing the amount of sugar in each of the bottles. So again, with no sugar in this bottle, we have one spoon of sugar in this bottle, two spoons of sugar in this bottle, and three spoons of sugar in this bottle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close the bottles using the lids and I'm gonna shake them up. Now, the reason we're shaking the bottles is to help dissolve all of the sugar in the water, help mix up all of the yeast, but it also helps to aerate the water inside the bottle. So do this for all of your bottles. Now, once you've done that, remove the lids.
And the next thing we're going to do is add a balloon to the top of each of our bottles. Now, if you're a little bit worried that your balloons might pop off the top of your bottle, you can secure them with your optional rubber band. Okay, sorry. We're gonna line up the bottles according to the amount of yeast, sorry, according to the amount of sugar that's in each bottle, and we're gonna leave them for a few hours and see what happens. Welcome back everyone. So what we've done there is we've left the bottles in a warm room for three and a half hours. And as you can see, we have some very interesting results to look at. The first thing I want to point out is the level of foam in each of the bottles. So as you can see here, um, from basically the, the liquid line, there's a small amount of foam being produced in each bottle. And as the concentration of sugar increases across the bottles, you seem to be getting a higher amount of foam in each of the, in each of the bottles. So this is showing us that the level of uh, sugar that was added to the experiment, as you can see the highest level here, and then decreasing in concentration. And finally, there's no sugar in this bottle. What we are, what we are, are observing is that the yeast seems to be more active as the concentration increases in the, um, in, in the experiment. Now, but most importantly, and the fun part of this experiment, is looking at the size of the bubbles, or the balloons. Um, and the balloons um, are basically trapping the carbon dioxide, and this is the gas that the, the yeast is, is, um, is producing as part of its um, uh, cellular respiration cycle. As you can see here, when there was no glucose, there's no gas being trapped in the balloon. So this is very interesting. Um, but, but we were expecting this because the, there was no sugar for the yeast cells to process Therefore, there's no gas being produced in the experiment. But probably the, the interesting um, result here is between the increasing concentrations of the yeast. So again, one teaspoon, two teaspoons, three teaspoons of sugar. And as you can see, depending on the amount of sugar in the experiment, you get a different size balloon in the experiment. Today we were learning about cellular respiration. We demonstrated it by trapping the CO2 that's produced as a waste product in the cycle. And if we increase the amount of uh, sugar in the, in the process, we can increase the amount of CO2 that's produced. And by trapping that with the balloons, we can demonstrate um, this with a very, in a very nice uh, visual way and a very fun way um, in, in the comfort of our own homes with some very, very basic tools that we can pick up uh, in, in our local supermarket. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you give it a go yourself and I hope you have fun learning all about science and all about cellular respiration in your own home. So thank you very much and I'll talk to you soon.